Today's video sponsor is Surfshark. Hello and good morning from Glasgow. Today I'm taking one of the most interesting flights it's possible to take anywhere in the world. Today's trip begins at Glasgow Airport, the only place you can fly to Barra from. Scotland has no airports that are connected directly to railways, so I arrived by bus and with no hold bag to check in, I went straight through security. Thank you. I've used Glasgow Airport 28 times according to my records, so there was really no excuse for forgetting where the lounge was. This is the regular upper deck lounge, which I'd normally go to by using my priority pass. Typical. <laughs> Can't catch a break. Well, this looks nice, but will they let me in on a priority pass? Not really clear. Let's go check it out. I bet it's a no. I, I honestly bet it's a no. So they do accept priority pass on a temporary basis while the upper deck lounge is closed. And actually this new lounge, which opened in 2019, is far better than the upper deck lounge. The Lomond Lounge has a great view of the apron, some hot and cold food options, and is just a much nicer place to sit and watch planes, like this Logan Air flight to Campbelltown. Have you seen my video of that route yet? Ah, now, some people ask on this channel, how do wheelchair users board planes if there are steps up to the aircraft? Well, they go in one of these scissor lifts, which raises up to the aircraft door. Keep an eye out for them next time you fly. Let's have a look and see what the weather for Barrett is like. Oh dear, it's going to rain. It might be okay by the time I leave, but it is going to rain. So hopefully I'm going to find some shelter to eat. I might pack lunch. Fingers crossed, hey? Passengers travelling abroad are reminded to check local and UK government travel advice to stay up to date on the latest developments for your destination. Okay, so what's the big deal about Barra Airport? Why is this such a unique flight? Well, Barra Airport is the only airport in the world which is also a public beach. There is no hard runway there. There's no grass, there's no asphalt. Essentially, the flight is going to land on the beach, on the sand, and that's not something I've ever done before. And I've really wanted to go to Barra for so long, and having travelled the world so often in the last four or five years and making all this content for this channel, I've just never got round to it. So this is one of those things that the pandemic has really given me an opportunity and a proper excuse to do. So every cloud is a silver lining. The other strange consequence of being a beach is that Barra Airport's flight times are determined by the tide. So if we're a few hours late coming off the island today, we're not going to be able to take off because there's no runway. It'll be underwater. Google Earth shows us what the beach is like at high tide, underwater. The beach extends all the way out here and forms a flat surface, long and reliable enough for our trusty Twin Otter aircraft. The airport is quite susceptible to poor weather though. There are quite a few flights each year that just don't make it to Barra, as this one from earlier in the month shows as it returns to Glasgow. It's been a long time since I've departed from these gates at Glasgow Airport. Today's video sponsor is Surfshark, an award-winning VPN or virtual private network. 
Surfshark is part of my personal travel arsenal for a whole list of reasons. If you're not attracted to the idea of leveraging lower ticket prices or staying safe on public Wi-Fi, maybe the whitelisting facility, industry-leading encryption, and a quick kill switch in case you lose internet might convince you to give it a go. But I find it so annoying when you can't access some content overseas. But Surfshark can help. Activate the VPN and select an appropriate spoof location and voila, the content is restored. It's dead easy and costs absolute peanuts too. You'd be mad not to consider it, especially as Surfshark have a special deal for my viewers. Go to surfshark.deals forward slash winging it for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. This is exciting. Off we go to Barra. What a great day for it as well. Well, here anyway. It's supposed to rain when we get there. It's not just me that's excited to get on this flight, hey? On board, I managed to get seated pretty quickly. I mean, the seats are not exactly hard to find. Twin otters, by the way, don't need a tug and instead do what's called a power back by changing the pitch of the propellers into reverse, which is pretty cool.
I've now done quite a few twin otter trips, so I probably don't need to show you around. But thanks to YouTube user Rotax88 who pointed out these lights will work if they're activated in the cockpit. Obviously, we don't need them today. The legroom, by the way, is pretty accommodating, although you can't stand up in the cabin. And no, there is no toilet on board. The weather began closing in as we headed further west, giving us only a teasing glimpse of the ground and sea below. Let's talk fares. What did I pay? Well, this cost me £160 return, but I did pay extra for ticket flexibility. You can do this trip for about £110 return if you're absolutely sure about when you'll travel, and one-way fares for about £55 each are also available, in case you decide to take the ferry in one direction. Here we go everyone, I'm about to tick off a significant aviation bucket list item. We're about to land on the sandy beach at Barra. And when I say raining, trust me, it was raining. I have no baggage. Some trivia for you. Barra is famed for having Great Britain's most westerly bus stop in Coolish Village.
I really had no idea twin otters could operate with so much water. They are remarkable machines. <laughs> Would you believe it? The weather has just cleared up. As soon as the plane left, we've got some blue skies coming. Look. I mean, this is Barrett Airport. One of those fantastic one building airports you get in this part of Scotland. I'm gonna try and make the most of the good weather while it's here. I'm not sure if it's gonna rain again later. Um, but now it's dry, I think it's time to take a little walk and have my packed lunch. That is what I've come here for. Let's go and check out what's around Barrett Airport if you decide to come here for a few hours like I have done. Just spending a few hours on Barra. And of course it rained as soon as I arrived. This is a this is a very silly hobby sometimes. But it's better than doing a nine to five job, I guess. Now there's a sign I've not seen before. Let's go climb this hill. It's actually turning out to be, touch wood, a really lovely day. I would never have thought that about 10 minutes ago. The rain was just absolutely biblical. But here we are. Got a rain jacket, walking boots, packed lunch. And some content in the bank. That's what we're here for. God, I've been meaning to come to this island for years and years and years. And it's another of these bucket list things. I'm just so glad that I'm here. Just get to walk around the place on my own. Of course, I've got a picnic with me, uh, but I don't have a picnic blanket, so I'm either going to get my trousers very wet, or we're going to do it standing up. Anyways, onwards and upwards. I wonder what's at the top of this hill. Wow. Wow. <laughs> There's two other people on this beach. Yes, Barra really is a magical place. And boy, was I glad I didn't do what a lot of av geeks do and return on the same plane I came in on. No, it's really worth exploring the island and everyone I know who's been can testify as to what a splendid place it is. I'm back traveling overseas again, but I did have nine months off the overseas travel thing, making videos like this and seeing more of my own country. I know one thing and that is that the prevailing weather is coming actually from over there and that if there is rain again it is going to be coming down this way diagonally so I don't really want to be too exposed on the beach I'm thinking my best bet is maybe just to head through here and maybe if it does rain again or if the wind picks up it'll offer me a bit of shelter who knows but um, I am feeling rather exposed at the moment. The weather at the moment is fantastic. It's about 20, 20 degrees. It is a beautiful day, temporarily. Um, but I'm not confident it's gonna stick. Let's go find somewhere to eat my boots meal deal. Here on the island of Barra, in the west of Scotland. Yeah, trusty boots meal deal. So, picked this up from uh, Glasgow Airport this morning. Capri Sun. A coronation chicken wrap. 
Now this is the only wrap where you actually got three instead of two for exactly the same price. So I just wonder if it's, if they're rubbish or not. I wonder why you get more of that product than the others. Lovely, healthy apple and grape bag. And because I knew it was gonna rain today, I'll keep this in reserve. This is, uh, this is for morale. Hopefully I won't need it today. Well, the time is now about 1.45. I've been on the beach for an hour and a half. I was so relaxed there that I actually fell asleep for a good half an hour after having my lunch. And now I'm having to kind of find my way back having lost the path to the airport. Unfortunately, I didn't, I didn't stray too far. Here we are. Hoping to see the inbound flight from Glasgow land here. The only problem I have is I don't have any access to Flight Radar 24 because there is no internet service on the island. You've just got that GPRS, the very basic signal, and you, you can't load any web pages and none of my apps will work on it. Um, there is decent phone signal if you want to send a, an actual text message, but that's about it. That is about it. Still. This is one of the more original days out I've done during the pandemic. I mentioned the ferry earlier. It sails here from Oban on the mainland, docking at the town of Castle Bay. You can take your car, but it's nearly five hours of sailing, so it's obvious the airport is a useful public amenity. Planes have been landing on the beach regularly since 1936, and in modern times, about 10,000 passengers a year pass through this airport. There are three runways, in fact, which are marked out by these high visibility beacons and runway marking boards. Inside, the airport is a Spartan affair. It's just one room, one check-in desk and a cafe which is closed. There's no VIP lounge, no duty free, and no pre-flight security either. That's pretty normal for small airports serving very small planes in the UK. Outside Barrett Airport, just checked in again um, for the return flight. Now, I had actually booked very resourcefully seat 1A for the return in the hope that I'd be able to get some good cockpit footage. Um, but apparently, um, just as was the case when I flew out of Campbelltown a few months ago, unfortunately, uh, row one is not in use, um, so they've bumped me all the way down to the back of the aircraft. Still at a window seat, that's, um, that's all still good, but sadly not the seat that I wanted. And although it's raining ever so lightly, I'm outside. Um, it's a bit easier to talk um, outside an airport rather than inside that one room and draw attention to myself. Also, um, hopefully I'll be able to see the inbound flight coming, which I believe will be landing kind of from that direction. If the wind stays the same. But um, rained when I landed. It's going to be raining when I take off again. But I did get an hour and a half on the beach with some fantastic weather and yeah it's definitely been one of the more interesting days out that I've done. Um, I'm really glad I've done it. I think I'll probably come back and I'll drive all the way up the Western Isles. I'll start here at Barra, perhaps rent a car uh, and drive all the way up taking several ferries to get all the way to the top. Um, it is a really magical part of the world. It's so peaceful too. I wouldn't believe this was an airport.
Right, right, now and then. Oh, excuse me. That's the right one. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Take care. Here we go. Flying back to Glasgow. Different aircraft than we came out on though. Still a twin answer, just a different aircraft. I thought they might have put the same aircraft on the shuttle all day, but uh, here we go. And so my brief stay on Barra ended. Sadly, the weather was shocking on the way back with the entire flight taking place in bumpy, grim cloud. So it's really not worth looking at, but I hope you enjoy the takeoff. And if you wait until the end of the video, you'll see the uncut takeoff in full from the GoPro. Don't forget to visit surfshark.deals forward slash winginit for 83% off and three extra months for free of Surfshark VPN. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time with a new video from Europe. Bye for now.